Hi, my name is Cindy Nguyen. Um, so I study ICAM, which is um, interdisciplinary computing and the arts major, and uh, cognitive science with a specialization in design and interaction. So <laughs> ICAM, usually I explain it as just like a mishmash of art and computer science. All of it's just like giving us the context of like how like they've intersected in the past, how they continue to intersect. And it was just like a lot about like the culture around it and how it's developed to that point. Within the history, it's just also art and then computing skills. So it's a lot. Um, cognitive science, on the other hand, it's like the study of cognition. So like, um, what exactly is making up like our mind or brain or whatever? Like, how is it that we think and things like that? So that's the cognition part. And that in itself is also very much like an interdisciplinary field. It's like psychology and computer science and like linguistics, philosophy, just a whole mess. But <laughs> My specialization is like human computer interaction. So specifically like the kinds of conversations that we can have with computers, be it through like a screen or like a mouse or stuff like that. Well, I entered into iCam and I was just like, okay, this might be fun. And like the first quarter, um, I was part of this program called like CASP and they're like telling us to make like, a four-year plan and I was just like okay time to make a four-year plan let's pick out the courses and once I did that on my little google sheet I figured out that with all like the credits that I had and stuff like that I didn't have to take a lot of GEs so I could technically graduate early in three years but I was just like nope I want to make full use of <laughs> my time here so I was just like let's find like another major like a couple of minors so then like I actually like just went out and like looked at what looked interesting so i was considering like a computer science minor a design minor and then i saw the cognitive science a part of the design part and i was just like i could just do the major like the design interaction because like okay because i was looking at all the classes and i was just like these are all really interesting and i need to be a, i need to like be like declared in it to like take it so i was just like okay let's do it <laughs> i got that all done spring quarter of my first year but, um very much self-taught Art started out as like a hobby kind of thing. So like it's like digital art, um, your traditional pencil drawings or whatever, and then graphic design and things like that. It wasn't until like high school that I started like doing more things. So for my portfolio, I was sending in like some of the drawings that I was really proud of, like digital art, and then like a lot of like the t-shirt designs and stuff that I had to do for previous clubs. Okay, also in high school, cause um, middle school me did not know. Like, it was just like, oh, that's in STEM, I think. <laughs> but in high school, I took a lot of AP classes. Um, I started out with Python, but I hated Python. So you can't ask me to code in that. I mostly know Java. And then that's what I learned there. And then getting into college, I learned Java again with CC11. And then a couple of classes was just like span, teach uh, JavaScript. So I know Java, JavaScript. And I looked up like tutorials and stuff for HTML and CSS over COVID. So I was just like, yeah. Well, making the four-year plan, like, helped me, like, look at it. Because I know, like, the minimum for financial aid or whatever is 12 units per quarter. So normally I'm taking 16 units, which isn't super bad. It's only really bad if, like, you're taking a bunch of production courses where you have to debate, like, a bunch of projects that you have to, like, think about that it gets really hectic. Last quarter, I was taking, like, three upper divs and then this really, like, busy work heavy lower div. So it was just like constant like work all the time and it was just like midterms were like right after each other and like doing things so like that was not fun so sleep was a <laughs> goodbye <laughs> but the workload it's like not unbearable if you can properly manage your time declare the whole process was really easy okay. um it was just the back and forth between counselors because i didn't get to like talk to them in person so it was like sending forms to like this department and the other department and then like making sure like you're getting your signatures and all that. So the whole process was easy. The whole doing it right now is in the middle. For ICAM and college side, I think with like any major, I would like look through all the courses and be like, okay, like, is this interesting to you? Like, would you want to take it? Because a lot of people I know that have started out in ICAM and they're like, wait i really don't like computer science and that's all like it's like a minor but also a big part of it so then they switched out <laughs> if you want to double major um a lot of people like prones are just like sitting in classes and like seeing if it's like interesting if they want to take it in the future just do that first and then declare it if you want to i was just like i need to declare a major so i didn't do any of that 
but I would just like, you know, look into the classes that you would take. A lot of ICAM, like the bulk of ICAM is like teaching you history or like the context of things. So, like they'll like, bring in like lecturers or like professors like who have done like some like really cool work and like they tell you like how they did it and it's like a self-taught process. Like I think one of the professors was just like, yeah, I just like learned like deep machine learning or whatever. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what do you mean you just learned it? <laughs> but uh, I think ICAM is a lot of that because they like in a lot of classes, they just like push you into it. like, okay learn this will help you the TAs will help you just learn this and make something with it so it's just like a lot of like adaptability flexibility and stuff like that okay I narrowed it down to like three classes that I really liked I liked mm -hmm. Viz 41 which is design communication I liked a lot of like the design and like typography stuff that they had us do because like I was oh I was interested in it and but I've never like done anything like that and they also start off with like um like kind of like an introspection kind of thing like like who you are as an artist and like what motivates you so like that's a really helpful exercise um this 142 practices in computing arts it's like a i can't remember div that was the one where like they like taught us javascript and was just like okay like make something with it and like i guess i was just having a really fun time it was like all the creative juices were flowing so then i made these two projects that i really really liked um one of them my final project i called out of focus it was like exploring like memory loss and things like that and I don't know I had a really fun time with it and it was like really like informative I guess like doing my own research and doing it so I enjoyed that COGS 10 cognitive consequences of technology with professor James Holland that was really fun also because like they had us make videos and that was like kind of cool but they were like what did you learn kind of videos like they had us go on like a social media fast and stuff like that and also they had us read like this book called amusing ourselves to death by Neil Postman and I thought that was a really fun read so the content and the professors for each of those classes are just really cool so those are my favorite okay so the thing about <laughs> this classes um a lot of the classes tend to be one day in like one week so it'll be like three hour blocks and like with covid everything was online so I did not have a fun time with that because it was just my attention span was shot I think I don't know, taking notes during some of the classes were like, it like kept me engaged. And like, I think this one, it was like intro to drawing. Um, they encouraged us to like just sketch during class. So like, I thought that was like really fun to do. It was like kind of, you know, terrible to sit through, but that was one. And then also for biz classes, there are, some of them are production courses. So you have to have like, you're making projects like maybe like every week or you're like working on like a really big project. And if you're taking multiple of those, or if you're taking, like, other classes that are, like, you know, like, involve, like, reading a lot or, like, writing a lot of essays, it can be very overwhelming. Because you have, like, five assignments due in, like, successive order, and it's just, like, there's only 24 hours in a day. Like, what do you want me to do, right? So that was terrible. Um, spring quarter and winter quarter of, like, every year so far has been, like, okay, sleep schedule. I'm so sorry. I'm going to neglect you. So, a lot of that was just like, okay, I gotta work through it so I have time to sleep. And it was just like making sure, like, okay, I need to take care of myself and eat and things like that. But, yeah. Similar to my advice with the courses, just search up what they have. Like, because they have, like, a list of, like, clubs and things like that that are there. So I, like, did that. And I found um, Design Co., which I really like. I go to their meetings sometimes. There's, like, identity-centered clubs. So those are like their own thing and like they'll have like their own like source of information usually like at the end of the term we're like oh like we're like new officers or new people or whatever so that's that. Mm -hmm. Within the college um, a lot of it like they'll tell you like what kind of opportunities there are and then like people will post like things on like the walls and stuff like that. So that's how I did I got into um orientation the orientation team at six college <laughs> um mostly because there was just a bunch of posters like join ol get involved with the ol like highlighted because good design or whatever <laughs> um that was that and then my friend who's also an l was just like encouraging people no <laughs> <laughs> i wish i did um no i don't um but usually if like i ever have like questions or stuff I tend to find <laughs> that in my upper year classes, a lot of um, my peers are older than me. If you like, you have like an in-person class and you like build the thing close thing, you can like ask them how it is. 
Or I feel like professors and TAs will be, like, fine with you, like, asking them questions. But other than that, no, I don't have, like, a mentor or anything. I generally consult fellow peers if they're available, if I can find them. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, like, the internet, I guess. Outdated yeah, information is still information. <laughs> I have not had much success, <laughs> but I can tell you what I've <laughs> absorbed from the internet. Um, I think one of my major problems or like <laughs> major problems, that sounds really bad. Um, it's like experience, you know, because like mm. you're like you don't have a portfolio really built yet. All your stuff is maybe from high school and it's just like I kind of don't want to show that. But also it's only it's the only thing I've got. And like I'm looking at these jobs and like, please give me experience. They're like, but do you have experience? It's really it's like a funny loop but i would say yeah, like think of like concepts like it doesn't have to be like fully fleshed out like just something that you're proud of maybe but doing a lot of those and then like just always scrounging around for like opportunities because like, like with the getting involved kind of bit like colleges like will generally like ask for like interns and stuff like that so that's that so just like keep an eye out on that if ucsc like promotes their handshake or whatever and there's like usually on-campus jobs for that too so i would just say like constantly go for opportunities even if you like don't have like the like, if you even if you keep getting rejected like me you know just keep going for it hopefully one day they'll accept you it's okay to not know what you're doing i certainly don't know what i'm doing um a lot of i think i took biz 10 and they have like a lot of reflections and stuff like that so like with that class it was um bringing in a bunch of like people who are like you know, like, actual artists, like, they, like, do, like, they have, like, the really cool projects that get funded, and they're just, like, okay, like, you're, like, you're, you're, like, someone I can look up to, because, like, they are, kind of, you know, so, like, when I took that class, I was just, like, wow, I'm, like, never gonna do any of this, like, this sounds, like, way out of my thing, like, there's these professors who was just, like, yeah, I, like, I just, like, went on my own thing, I did whatever I wanted, and, like, now we're here, I'm, like, what, but, I think it's okay to, like, feel like that for a little bit, and you don't have to, like, really figure out everything, because, like, that's what college is for, and, like, what the classes are kind of, like, trying to training you for, like, getting to know, like, what you can do, and then, like, learning things and stuff like that, so if you feel as though you literally don't know shit, um, that's okay, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> you will in the future, <laughs> or at least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs>